2020 has started off in such a traumatic experience. Recent tragedies were the fires of Australia, a 7.1 megaton earthquake in Mexico and a lot more. But nothing has received more press and attention than what is going on right now in 2020. That being COVID-19. Now I have my thoughts on the subject which I'll address in a moment, but I want us to see the effects that the media has had in regards to this virus. But even before I do that, I do want to take a brief moment to express that this virus has indeed taken the lives of many people, and let it be known that death is not a side issue, in fact it is the issue, because we are all human beings with loved ones. And so my condolences goes out to all those affected by this virus who have lost loved ones and had lives torn apart. But please watch this video until the very end because I want to share real practical advice as well as real practical hope. Now so far, day in and day out, news reports have expressed that people are in fact dying by the numbers. Ashish, we're just understanding that uh, two more patients have died in UK hospitals um, from COVID-19. That's coming from NHS England. So that brings the total who have sadly died to 10. To 10, yeah. We had two more yesterday. South Korea has reported a record daily surge in new coronavirus cases, taking the total to more than 3,000. Uh, 17 people have died. Some breaking news to bring you on coronavirus. And Italy has given updated figures. The death toll from the coronavirus outbreak in Italy has risen to 631 from 463. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here to start a new week. And we begin tonight with fast-moving developments involving the coronavirus here in the U.S. Tonight, the virus has now taken at least six lives here in the U.S., and there are at least 100 confirmed cases. The toll growing, and with testing, they are expecting that number to rise. With news like this, it has caused self-preservation to rise where people have gone through a craze of buying numerous amounts of toilet tissues, hand sanitizers and other hygienics. The fight over toilet paper that went viral around the world. I just want one pack. No, not one pack. And some are even selling it at extortion prices due to the lack of resources which brings about a monopoly. The same goes for food items like beans, pasta and all other items for storage. And there are even lengths where the government have now placed certain countries under lockdown such as Italy, as well as France and Spain who have just recently followed in Italy's direction. Now after doing research, it's come to my attention that yes, though this has caused an issue in the world today, it's funny how the media only seems to focus on the deaths but they neglect to show many cases where people are recovering more than they are dying. According to valid sources, including John Hopkins Medical Research and the Daily Mail, they researched how more than 50 to 70,000 people are recovering, which includes a 17-day-year-old baby and a 103-year-old woman. And so there has to be more investigation in these matters due to the fact that there are no personal reports of the conditions of the people who died. Were they sick before receiving the virus? Were they unhealthy in their lifestyle which causes very low immunity to disease? And what about the many other diseases where people are dying more frequently than COVID-19? But at the same time, I suspect that they will put out reports, which they have done at this current moment in regard to the elderly dying, but they should have put this forward at the beginning because many people think that people are just dying by the numbers. Which begs the question, is this really a deadly virus to end the world, so to speak, or is it just a propaganda with another governmental agenda? Now we should know by now that the media has a way of conditioning the minds of people to put them in a state of fear to incite an agenda. Because if the population is in a state of fear, the population will do any and everything for the redemption or the redeeming of world prosperity. And interestingly enough, after it typically takes many years to find a cure or treatment for these types of diseases, New York Post and other articles suggest that a vaccine could be ready as quickly as the virus has come out. Now again, after looking at this and more, I want us to get to the crux of the matter. While many people are in a state of terror, fear and confusion, 
The book that has been and is still constantly being listed as a fairy tale has given us the answers to the times we are in right now. What book am I talking about? The Bible. Jesus told us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 that famines, diseases, disasters, sickness, deaths and wars will not only happen in the last days but that it will continue in rapidity. He likens these events to birth pangs, which means that the closer the contractions, the nearer of the baby's arrival. So the more we see a frequent amount of events listed in Matthew chapter 24, the more we know Jesus is coming again. But is there counsel for us today to consider regarding last day events and to also prove that what is going to happen has already been written in the Bible? Notice. The first point to look into is the cashless society. Now the Bible talks of a time when those who have the mark of the beast will not be able to buy and sell, i.e. trading, simply because they are not complying with the beast which the Bible interprets as a kingdom or nation. But what kingdom is this referring to that the Bible is talking of? Is it China, America or Russia? I'll let you know soon enough. But notice what the Bible says about those who do not comply with this beast's power, this kingdom. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now with the coronavirus, it's been said that the disease could actually be caught through the touching of physical money and based upon the language of the world at this given moment with cash it's been said that in order to monitor money it's best to go cashless. For example, TfL which is the transportation in London does not use cash for transportation. Sweden at the moment is heading to be fully cashless. But regarding COVID-19 and a cashless society, according to Fintech it quotes in saying this. Analysis has revealed that if current trajectories towards digitization continue, 8.17 million vulnerable members of society would suffer due to their dependence on physical payment methods. This includes 5.2 million households or 80% of elderly homes that rely on cash. It's a well-known fact that money holds a whole host of germs and so it's more important than ever right now to try and curb your habit of using physical money whether it's notes or coins. And so, based on the Bible and the last days, this is simply setting in place the last scenes of this earth history. With all the movements to combat climate change, injustice and all the above, Though this virus may not be a product of the end times per se, it is surely setting in place the mindset of the masses to do any and everything they can in order to maintain worldly prosperity, even to the point of getting rid of people who are posing a threat to this society. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And so, as Jesus has warned us of these events such as disasters, famine, sickness, wars and so on, what are we experiencing right now? All these are the beginning of sorrows. The second point to look into is the murder of the righteous. Now I want us to take a lesson as to what is going on with COVID-19. According to the self-preservation of people today, it seems to be more every man for himself. I must take care of mine. This is the same mindset that can cause someone to steal from another in order to survive or even go as far as kill someone to ensure their own personal gain. Now based upon the rush of things I cannot help but bring to mind what I read in the book The Great Controversy which highlights the history of the Dark Ages and the events leading to the second coming of Jesus Christ in great detail. Notice what it says here in regards to what we are seeing manifested right now. Talking of Satan it says, 
while appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster, until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Even now he is at work, in accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves and earthquakes, in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. The earth mourneth and fadeth away, the haughty people do languish. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed or broken the laws, changed the ordinances, broken the everlasting covenant. And then it says, And then the great deceiver, which is Satan, will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. The class that have provoked the displeasure of heaven will charge all their troubles upon those whose obedience to God's commandments is a perpetual reproof to transgressions. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favour and temporal prosperity. And so with COVID-19, the virus spreading and people in a state of terror, acting in such a frantic way to secure their own safety, and with the many other events that have transpired in the past, such as climate change and other natural disasters, injustice and all the above, and more specifically how the language of today is suggesting that Sunday should be honoured to restore this world, with this mindset combined, the Bible expresses how it would not be a problem for people to agree that the commandment keepers of God should be executed in order to restore, as it says, divine favour and worldly prosperity. Now, if you want to know how I came to this conclusion using the Bible, I've done a series called From Daniel to the Sunday Law, which starts in prophetic history during the time of Babylon all the way to today, right now. This will be clearly explained point by point with unrefutable explanation of what we are experiencing today. But it is no surprise that now it is said that Donald Trump expresses in his latest speech declaring Sunday a national day of prayer, a day not sanctified by God. We are a country that throughout our history has looked to God for protection and strength in times like these. Trump tweeted, no matter where you may be, I encourage you to turn towards prayer in an act of faith. Together, we will easily prevail. Now, though I do agree with the sentiments mentioned in these words, again, though this is not the Sunday law in and of itself, this is a snapshot of the bigger picture soon to come upon this world. Again, please watch my series from Daniel to the Sunday law for more in-depth details and how you too can know where we are in this world's history. Because according to the Bible, in the book of Revelation chapter 13, it mentions that though there is going to be a power that speaks as a lamb, it will eventually speak as a dragon. Don't forget that. The next point to look into is country living. Now based upon what the Great Controversy states, how all these things are leading to a prime agenda, it's imperative to ask if there are any practical things we ought to be doing right now to prepare for the worst. Well, the same author who spoke of these things in the book The Great Controversy states a very practical plan which I believe is truly inspired. She says, Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country, where they can raise their own provisions, 
for in the future the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. In the history during the first Sunday law, it was those in the countries, not those in the towns or cities, that were not under any obligations of legalities. According to Constantine, who issued the first Sunday law, a pagan day which aimed to nullify the true Bible Sabbath, he states as follows. Let all the judges and town people and the occupation of all trades rest on the venerable day of the sun, which was Sunday. But let those who are situated in the country freely and at full liberty attend to the business of agriculture because it often happens that no other day is so fit for sowing corn and planting vines. Lest the critical moment being let slip, men should lose the commodities granted by heaven. And so in God's wisdom, he admonishes people to be in a position where you can grow your own food, which in doing so is raising your own provisions. For more information about country living, please click on the links we have below. Now the last point I want to look into is what I call the laws of health. The Bible gives us a promise, a precious promise which though given to Israel is surely for us today in principle. God says in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and wilt do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, I will not put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The reason why we are in a world full of sickness and disease, the Bible states is because of sin. Sin is breaking God's law, and in doing so, sin is invited. But if we do what God says, God promises that his faithful people will be preserved. And so this is an imperative time of trusting in God as you obey him. The same way he preserved the Israelites during the plagues in Egypt, where they received sores and other diseases, God has promised he will take care of you if you obey him. Now one of those commandments issued to us are his laws of health, which true science can testify. God's law says, Thou shalt not kill, meaning that if you do things to kill your body, you are violating this commandment. But God has set out some things so that we be not in confusion. In the beginning, before sin, God set out the diet plan for mankind, which were the vegetation of this world, fruits, nuts, grains and vegetables. He also put them in an environment where they were in a garden, that being in nature. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat or for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for food or for meat, and it was so. Now based upon science, according to the recent documentary Game Changer, it showed how athletes went from meat to a plant-based diet, and their performance was drastically improved, simply because the blood in our bodies carries the nutrients in our bodies which meat can often slow down. Figures like Arnold Schwarzenegger, who had a huge meat diet, turned to a plant-based diet. We also have the strongest bodybuilder, who is a plant-based eater, who when was asked how he became as strong as an ox, he replied in saying, have you ever seen an ox eat meat? And so the Bible has enough resources to help our immunity to keep fit and strong and to fight off any diseases in the process. 
which shows that God knew exactly what he was doing when he wanted man to be in nature and especially have the natural plant-based diet. Now for more information, the same author who wrote the book The Great Controversy and who wrote the book Country Living has a book called Ministry of Healing and Councils on Diets and Foods. These books will give you ample understanding on how to combat this virus and many other sicknesses with what's known as the laws of health. Now just a breakdown of some of these laws of health, we have the following. Water, which purifies the blood, hydrates our bodies and brings revitalization. Sunlight, which is a pure source of vitamin D and removes stress and depression and thus brings about good feelings in our hormones. Exercise, which strengthens the body, clears out impurities and refreshes our circulation. Nutrition, which gives the body truly what it needs for it to function as it should. Sleep, which recovers the body through the process of melatonin. Pure air, which gives the body health by sending oxygen to the blood and thus keeps the body in a pure condition. Personal hygiene, which keeps us away from bacteria and all other forms of disease such as COVID-19. Clean sweet premises, which ultimately keeps you in an environment of cleanliness. Dress, which if dressed properly equalizes the blood circulation and keeps you healthy, covering the limbs to avoid rapid heart rate because of blood loss because of cold or hot conditions. And finally, we have trust in God, which keeps your mind, body and soul in a complete state of perfect peace, which will therefore eliminate all stress, anxiety, fear and trauma, which science expresses can literally open up the floodgates to sickness. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And so these are some of the key books to add to your library to read, understand and apply. For as it says, these are indeed the beginning of sorrows. But with this understanding, you will have time to prepare. Now friends, this virus, like I said, has made its way to cause people to be in such a state of terror and fear. And even through this terror and fear, have invited disease upon themselves. And it's moments like this that can cause people to be in such a state of fear that they think a cough, a sneeze, a high temperature is automatically COVID-19. But don't let it be a means of self-preservation to the point where you become heartless. This is the time where especially the people of God are to be an aid to those in need of help. Obviously protect yourself, but the heart of the matter of what I am saying is be available, for Jesus was available when we were in our sickness. Based upon the information that you've heard today, if you take serious heed of it, I guarantee you will have nothing to fear. Please consider the information in this video, be open minded to the information, and as peacefully as I currently am feeling, I hope you too will experience the peace. For the Bible says, There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out the links in the description, and may you keep safe, and may God be your protection. Bye for now.